wake vortex turbulence. Definition Wake vortex turbulence is defined as turbulence which is generated by the passage of an aircraft in flight. It will be generated from the point when the nose landing gear of an aircraft leaves the ground on takeoff and will cease to be generated when the nose landing gear touches the ground during landing. Where another aircraft encounters such turbulence, a wake vortex encounter is said to have occurred. All aircraft generate wake vortices, also known as wake turbulence, which continue to be evident far behind the generating aircraft. Another aircraft crossing this wake may feel a sharp and brief turbulence which can be strong under some circumstances. Let's review the specific characteristics of wake vortices and how pilots should react in case of an encounter to ensure the safety of the flight. Every airplane creates wake turbulence, and proper precautions must be taken to avoid encountering wake turbulence. So, what is wake turbulence? If you have ever seen a speedboat, you have probably noticed the wake or waves it leaves behind in the water as it speeds by. Like water, air is also a fluid, and as airplanes fly through the air, they also create a wake. This wake creates a stream of turbulence behind the airplane that is generated by the wingtips. Fundamentally, air from below the wing is drawn toward the upper portion of the wing because of the lower pressure on top of the wing. This creates spiraling vortices as the air flows around the wingtips. These vortices will move away from the airplane's wingtips and drift downwards. Where do wake vortices come from? All aircraft generate wake vortices, also known as wake turbulence. When an aircraft is flying, there is an increase in pressure below the wing and a depression on the top of the aerofoil. Therefore, at the tip of the wing, there is a differential pressure that triggers the roll-up of the airflow aft of the wing. Limited swirls exist also for the same reason at the tips of the flaps. Behind the aircraft all these small vortices mix together and roll up into two main vortices turning in opposite directions, clockwise behind the left wing, seen from behind, and anti-clockwise behind the right one. What are the characteristics of wake vortices? Size, the active part of a vortex has a very small radius, not more than a few meters. However, there is a lot of energy due to the high rotation speed of the air. Descent rate, in calm air, a wake vortex descends slowly. As an order of magnitude, in crews, it could be 1,000 feet below and behind the generating aircraft at a range of around 15 nautical miles. Then, when far away from the generator, the rate of descent becomes very small. In approach, the descent is usually limited to around 700 feet however, depending on weather conditions the descent rate may vary significantly and may even be very small. One of the key factors affecting this descent is the variation of the temperature with the altitude. A temperature inversion limits the rate of descent. What are the characteristics of wake vortices? Decay rate, one important parameter of the wake vortex is the decay of its strength with time. The decay rate varies slightly from one aircraft type to another. Unfortunately, in calm air, Due to low external interference, it is rather low and this is why the separation between aircraft needs to be so large. Ground effect, when the aircraft is close to the ground, less than a wingspan, the two vortices tend to drift out from the center line, each towards its own side, at a speed of around 2 to 3 kilotons. It is this phenomenon, when associated with a light crosswind component that tends to hold the interwind vortex roughly on the center line, whilst the downwind vortex moves away. Due to this phenomenon, the decay is much faster in ground effect. The vortices from larger aircraft sink initially at about 300 to 500 feet per minute to a maximum of 900 feet below the flight path of the generating aircraft. Vortex strength diminishes with time and is affected by atmospheric conditions and contact with the ground. In calm wind, as the vortices sink close to the ground, 
they tend to move laterally over the ground at approximately two to five knots. The vortices are strongly influenced by ambient wind. A strong enough wind will dissipate the turbulence. A light crosswind will decrease the lateral movement of the upwind vortex and increase the movement of the downwind vortex. A tailwind condition can move the vortices forward into the touchdown area. One of the most hazardous situations is a light quartering tailwind. 